Hello and welcome another episode of The Nonprofit Show. Today we have with us Nicole Porter and Nicole's here from Monomoy Social Media. We're going to learn where that name came from and she's here to talk to us about engagement, the secret to social media. So before we start this conversation with you, Nicole, we want to remind our viewers and our listeners across the globe who we are. So hello again to Julia C. Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Thanks to you, we are marching towards our fourth year. March will be our fourth year of the nonprofit show. I am honored to sit alongside you, nerd out with you every single day. I'm Jarrett R. Ransom, nonprofit nerd and CEO of the Raven Group. And we have had so many fantastic guests, so many amazing conversations. Thanks to our sponsors that keep us going and growing. So a huge verbal shout out of love to our best friends over at Bloomerang. American Nonprofit Academy, Your Part-Time Controller, Be Generous, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and The Nonprofit Nerd. These companies are with us day in, day out. I also like to say week in, week out, because so many people when they hear of The Nonprofit Show, they say, wait, you do this every day? Yes. We say yes, every single day. So again, thank you so much gratitude to our sponsors for allowing us this opportunity to be of service. And if you missed any of these every single day episodes, you can find us on all of the fantastic streaming platforms, including Roku, YouTube, Vimeo, Fire TV, as well as podcast. So excited to be on these channels. Cue us up wherever you stream your entertainment. Julia just outed herself and said yesterday she did a little bit of a Netflix, but I think what she meant was the nonprofit show. Uh, so binge watching the nonprofit show is what she did. <laughs> I start, well, you know, I do, I believe it or not, I do watch the episodes pretty much every day mm -hmm. um, because, you know, Jarrett, when you're on and you're doing your thing, it's different than seeing yourself and trying to learn. And we're not professional broadcasters. I mean, uh, we've had to learn how to <laughs> to be effective, right? And it's so been a lot of fun. Yeah. And and listening to myself, uh, I'm listening to the podcast of, right. of the show and that's that's a lot of fun. So, um, so Kate, we are excited to have you on, Nicole, and excited to uh, jump into this conversation with you. Again, Nicole Porter, CEO, Monomoy Social Media. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. This is so exciting. Oh, it's going to be a blast. We pride ourselves on being a casual conversation. We're not a webinar. We're not a lecture series. We are, you know, three of us having coffee, water, whatever, just having a great conversation. But let's start off with your name. Let's start off with Monomoy. We know where it's from and the origin story. But for our viewers and listeners, share with us a little bit about yourself and the company. All right, so I'm Monomoy Social Media. Um, Monomoy comes from my local area. So it's a local area I live in. There's a Monomoy Wildlife Refuge. Um, everything around here is named Monomoy. Um, and so that's in Massachusetts on Cape Cod where I live with my husband and my three sons, I am my rescue dogs and my six ducks that live in my backyard. Um, <laughs> right, that, there's, uh, we'll go into this later, but there's an authenticity piece for you. Um, <laughs> That's great. So, That's great. Wow. We uh we handle so we do full service social media. We take it over for folks and do it for them so they don't have to worry about it. Uh, we do ads and we also have a membership where we give people content that they are in charge of doing it themselves and we give them some support with group coaching. So it's a little bit about me and Monomoy. I love it. I think it's really cool and I, I love this conversation in terms of full transparency transparency and authenticity. Um, Jarrett Ransom and I are on the same page for many things, but in this area, we are also, we are often at loggerheads, um, not because of the concept, but because of the bandwidth, right? And mm -hmm. it is just such an interesting amount of pressure. I, I'll witness to me, um, Jarrett is so good at this. I am not. And it's just one of those things that I, I really, I can't wait to hear what you have to say. And the first thing is that was like magical. It gave me a little permission to breathe. It got a man up. Don't do it all. Focus is the key. Okay. Give us some grace on this. 
<laughs> what does it mean? Yeah. I, so my take on this particular topic is starts at the very beginning on where are you going to focus on your platforms? So what that means is you don't have to be everywhere all the time, right? And I think that a lot of people think that when they think about social media, they're like, oh, I got to be on Facebook and I have to be on Instagram and now TikTok's a thing and, right. and you don't, right? Just because TikTok is the new thing, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's where your audience is hanging out, right? And Clubhouse was the new thing in 2021. Like, do you have the bandwidth to be on there? Because you have to be there for, you know, it's an audio thing. So you have to converse with people over there. Mm -hmm. um, so really, you have to look at where is your audience hanging out? What do, what do I have the bandwidth to create content for? And where do I have the bandwidth to interact? And, and just focus on one or two places where your audience is hanging out and really put your efforts there. And you're going to see your social media efforts go a lot further by doing that as well. Because chances are, when you think you have to be everywhere, you're not going to be anywhere. So that focus is so important. Um, and with nonprofits in particular, I think generally they have to pick two, um, generally because you're looking at dual audiences. And I think that's something that a nonprofit is unique with as opposed to just a small business, right? Because you're often looking at, okay, well, we have donors and fundraisers, but we also have the people that we're servicing, right? And we need to reach both of those audiences. So maybe you pick one place for each of those things and then show up there. Um, but it's definitely don't feel overwhelmed by it, right? Think what, what's manageable for me? Where, where can I show up? It's gonna make the most impact focus there. And I have to say, I love this answer. I have, uh, you know, subscribed to this as well, Julia. So just as a, as a tip, like I am not everywhere. I'm not on TikTok. I'm not on Pinterest. I'm not on, you know, some of these platforms because I simply don't have the bandwidth. And I say that also to my clients and I'm curious where you've seen, you know, truly Nicole, some of the, the nonprofit seeing their success, because I wave the flag for LinkedIn number one, and then, you know, the social channels, like pick a social channel, Instagram, Instagram and Facebook are connected. You know, like if you're doing TikTok, maybe that's a thing too. So I'm curious if you've started to see some platforms that are really rising to the top that maybe you would recommend what to that they should be on. So it's kind of hard because it really is dependent on your audience, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you have a very local nonprofit, um, I actually recommend Facebook because Facebook community groups are very underutilized and they are a great place to get the word out, especially for nonprofits. Um, I do agree with you on LinkedIn. It is a great place to connect with donors and companies that might want to be involved and really take advantage of their purpose-driven marketing. So mm -hmm. LinkedIn is great for that. Um, if you have something that's very visual, right? Maybe you're doing art for people like kids or people with disabilities or whatever it might be, Instagram might be the place for you. Um, I've actually really seen a lot of success on Twitter. Um, I know Twitter currently, as we're talking, is a little bit up in the air. A lot of people, unfortunately, have left that platform, which really kind of makes me sad. Um, so right now we're kind of watching Twitter, but um, a lot of my nonprofit clients have done fabulously over on Twitter. So that's definitely one to watch. Um, but I would definitely take a look, take a look at your audience, excuse me, and see where they're, see where they're hanging out, right? What are your demographics? Who are you trying to reach? Yeah. And then that's where you, that's where you put your effort. Yeah. I, how does that sit with you, Julia? I'm curious. You know, first of all, I got to say, and there's a 20 year difference between the two of us. I'll let you guess who's older. <laughs> <laughs> you're older in spirit my friend you're older <laughs> in spirit but listen i i i find it fascinating that you would say that you're not everywhere because i feel like you're omnipresent mm -hmm. and so i'm i think that's an interesting observation to kind of piggyback to nicole's comment and it almost seems like my experience with your work um jared if you're doing it well even if it's only in one area, it seems like it's you're doing more. And, and Nicole, would you say that that's accurate? I mean, absolutely. You know, because I, I feel think like, I feel like Jared, you're just like the master of this. 
Oh, well, I mean, I, I hire people like our guests today to help with that because <laughs> you can't be all, all places to all. And, and I know the next topic we want to talk about is really that authenticity. And, yeah. and I'm curious what you say to that, Nicole, because I, again, I just, you know, outed myself. I have a team that helps me with this. And then I, I jump in with my own authentic post, my own kind of like, you know, comments there, but I'm curious uh, from you, how you have guided so many organizations with their own social media platforms to really show up in this authentic space, authenticity in this authentic space. So I honestly, I start them with baby steps because a lot of times they're not comfortable doing the behind the scenes, less curated content. So if I can start by posting their headshot and then showing them the difference between that and just a static graphic, and then we kind of work up to it. So that's really how we start. Okay, now send me one picture a week. Now let's work up to video, Mm -hmm. right? And, or we can, you know, start doing video slideshow style with, you know, right. and, and start using their photos. So that that's how we start. Um, because you ha- you really do have to build up to it. And I had to build up to it. I was not comfortable taking a duck and getting on camera when <laughs> I first started my, my <laughs> social media business, but now I am. Did you um, say and, a duck? You did say Oh, a I did. Okay. I did. Oh, yeah. Okay. I want to know more of this because I'm also curious if this has come through, you know, since March of 2020, like during our COVID years, if we're seeing an increased level of authenticity. For sure. I think it's been building for a while. Um, and I think people really let the guard down when they were home a lot more. Um, and I think we're going to really see a big jump in 2023. I think people are creating that type of content. People are voyeuristic. They want to see behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do want to say one of the things that um, you caught me, Julie, in the the very beginning, is you said you thought it seemed really overwhelming Mm -hmm. to to have that authentic content. And I, I want to make the distinction that just because you're authentic doesn't mean you're not planning and it doesn't mean that you're not scheduling. Right. So just because you come up with something off the cuff doesn't mean you have to post it right then. You can schedule it ahead. And then you it's like a gift to your future self. When you're scheduling out your content, you can have your (laughs) you have it. It's already there. Right. Or if you have a team, right, like Jared does, you can give them a few videos. You can give them a few behind the scenes photos and then they can post that for you. So that you're not just like, oh, what am I going to post today? I know I have to post a behind the scenes photo. What's it going to be? You can really help your audience connect with you by posting that type of stuff. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not planning it out and that you have to do it right then when it comes to you. So, so- I got to... I gotta ask. Let me jump in. Jared, Jared and I are like. Gay, 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 gay. I want to know about this duck. I'm. I just I, just make sure you put a bookmark for that. I, so this is the thing, you know, for me and for the nonprofit sector, um, and believe it or not, as much as I get accused of being flashy, um, I am very private. There are many things that mm-hmm. I do not talk about. I don't want to share. I don't think it's appropriate. I think it's old school, right? It's an old school thing, and and that's. That's my own baggage about how the marketplace has shifted. But, you know, for a lot of nonprofits, we have HIPAA laws, we have privacy mm-hmm. issues. I mean, we can't in the, in the domestic violence space, mm-hmm. we can't even disclose where our facilities are, right? Yeah, so right. How, how do you navigate that authenticity and still protect what you have to do, not only with your clients, but also with your donors? I mean, how does that work? So I think maybe there is a bit of a misconception that authenticity means you're showing everything and you certainly don't have to do that. You can hold stuff back. Absolutely. You can show behind the scenes and not show everything. Um, You know, for instance, I, I have three kids. And if you look at my business social media feed, you will not see them very often. I'm very careful about posting that. And that's my own personal preference. Um, I really keep that on my private accounts. Um, It's very important to me to protect them. But I can still be authentic by, you know, 
showing, okay, this is what I'm doing at my desk today, right? This is what we're working on. Hey, we're working on our next fundraiser. This is what we're doing to do it, right? So it doesn't have to be, this is where the place is, this is the you know, people we're serving. You can even say, you know, we helped this person today, but it doesn't have to be, you know, detailed enough to give away who that person is, where they are, you could say, we, you know, we were able to get this person out of this situation or we were, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so authenticity doesn't mean necessarily showing people things they you can't show them or don't want to show them. It's just letting them in a little bit to get to know you better. Um, so I think that that is a really important distinction in, yeah. in, in those two things. Yeah. Okay, so to give Jarrett Ransom her due, how would you bring in one of your ducks in rela I mean, really, like, how would you do that in relationship to your work? How, how would you do that to? Well, to she has done it. it. So how did you do it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll send you guys the link after to the video. Um, so actually, I just ended, I did, got this idea in September. So I was talking to somebody that was doing coffee chats with their child. Um, and they went really well. And so they were in their car and their kid was in the back and they had both gotten like a donut and they did this weekly, right? This is their weekly thing. Um, and so what I have done, instead of doing coffee chat, I did duck chat. And so I have six ducks. They're all girls. Um, they're on an egg laying strike, which is like <laughs> so ironic right now. I can't even right? tell you. But the males when you need come on. eggs. <laughs> Let's get going, ladies, but they're not. So they, they have to be on social media instead. And so I, I put one on my lap and I gave social media tips and we just talked that way. But it's it's a little different. It's a it's a lot different. OK. Um, and <laughs> it's, and it was very much, you know, it was still on brand for me, but it also let people know, like, this is my life. I work from home. I have my ducks, my dogs, um, yeah. but I'm still, you know, I'm still a professional. I still have a lot to say. So it let people know me and connect with me while still getting value from my content. Love it. Yeah. I love it so much. And then we've also had a guest on, I cannot recall their name, but it was about ethical storytelling. And so we can share our authentic stories. We can, you know, uh, do a video, we can do some narratives, as you had said, you know, also, Nicole, we could do a static photo or something. It can be authentic and it can be scheduled. So it's not this or that it, it's a yes. And kind of an opportunity. Yes. So what about those real-time interactions? Because I imagine, you know, we, we create something that we want to share from this authentic, authentic, authentic space. That's clearly a very hard word for me. Sorry, Brene Brown. I'm failing at this word today. Um, <laughs> that's my vulnerability I'm sharing here. Um, and then we have, you know, that real-time interaction. So the post has been made on whatever platform we choose. How do we best leverage this real-time time? So there's a couple of things you can do. Um, one is definitely responding to your comments. If somebody is commenting or if somebody is tagging you, please respond to them. Um, it's really important because people want to have a conversation with you and that's why they're commenting. Now, that doesn't mean the second they comment, you have to go in there and, and respond to them, right? You can check once a day. You can check once every other day and make sure that you're responding to them and just making them feel heard, making them feel validated and having that conversation. Um, you know, I will say if, if you do it sooner, it does help a little bit, but honestly, we're all so busy. It's really not realistic to do that. So I think putting it in your calendar to do it means you will. Whereas if you think you're going to go, go and respond to every comment as soon as it comes in, Mm -hmm. Other things are going to take over. You're going to get fragmented. And again, it's not going to happen. So it's, you know, if you can put it into your schedule, it's a lot easier to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a quick question because you yeah. manage people's social media. So for Monomoy social media, you and your team, right? Like, yes. how do you respond for these real-time interactions? Yeah, can you talk question. us through how you, as, you know, a manager of these platforms, how you've managed that? Mm -hmm. um do you mean specifically as far as content or as, as far as time or both well content. really the content <laughs> I'm thinking of like okay you're responding to people that have tagged your client mm -hmm. or they've tagged you know someone within your clients um kind of you know 
sphere. So how do you as yep. a social media managing company, how do you interact with that real time? So what we do similarly, we will put it into our calendars. So we're checking our clients. So each, everybody on my team has certain clients they work with mm -hmm. and we will make sure that we have it scheduled into our day. So, okay, every day we're going to check these comments. Um, and then from that perspective, if we have a like a comment that's about the content, it's usually pretty easy for us to correspond with that because sure. we, we, created the content. So we know what it's about and we're able to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, if it's somebody personally that knows the business owner, then we're probably going to say, you know, hey, do you, do you know this person? If they're saying like, hey, I'm looking forward to our cup of coffee this weekend, mm -hmm. we might check with the with the owner or the whoever it is, you know, sure. and say, can we, you know, do, are you getting a cup of coffee with them? <laughs> Should, yeah. Like, but, and then we'll say, yeah, us too, or something, but we wouldn't just go ahead and um, off the cuff say that if we didn't know we, we, right. Right. um, yeah. So, um, yeah, another great way is actually to go out and comment on other people's posts. Um, and that's a huge thing that a lot of people miss. Um, and, and also might find overwhelming. So again, I, I'm going to put this on a mug someday, but it's, I always tell people, do what's manageable for you. So if it's three people a day, if it's one person a day that you can go out and comment on someone else's mm -hmm. posts, mm -hmm. it's going to make your content go a lot further mm -hmm. and people are going to start to see you and you're going to stay top of mind. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can say, oh, I'm going to do five people every Monday and that's all you can do for the week, that's great. It's better to be consistent with it. Yeah. And, and your final point is really about this. It's having that true connection you know, with your audience, but I think also the audience is like your peer audience, unless I'm, I'm misreading this. So how to truly connect with your audience. I could see, you know, it's connecting with someone else's post or, you know, if they tagged you, you're engaging in that. So, so what do you advise for some best practice on that true connection? I think really it's a lot of what we've talked about and all of it coming together, right? So it's having that authentic content it's going out and talking to other people and not just talking to other people and saying, Hey, Hey, nice post, because that's not really going to get you anywhere, but actually giving genuine feedback to their post or thoughtfully responding to a comment. That's, what's going to make that connection. Not just saying, thanks, that's not going to do it. <laughs> but if you really think about how you connect with people offline and then bring it, to your social media platforms. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to connect you with people because they're going to see that you're a real person that actually cares and not just a bot because we know when a bot's showing up in our comment section, we can tell. Yes. Um, so yeah. <laughs> that really is what um, I think is going to make the biggest difference is to just, how would you converse with somebody in real time, right? And if you were in the grocery store and somebody said that to you, Mm -hmm. Right. How would you respond? Right. As opposed to somebody commenting on social media. And I think that's kind of a good filter to put it through. And, and that's going to help. That's really going to help that connection. So my question is, you know, for businesses, I like myself, I am a lot of my brand, right? For organizations, there's the board, there's the executive team, there's the program staff, the fundraising staff, the volunteers, like there's so many kind of yeah. stakeholders. So how do you manage that, you know, as you mentioned, you know, we're all a little voyeuristic in our ways of like wanting to know what's behind the scenes. We want to know who has a duck, who has a slithering <laughs> snake, right? Like we want to know these things. So how do you balance um, the internal stakeholders? But I'm also curious if you can touch on it as well about the organizational tone and voice that's been mm -hmm. branded for that organization. Yeah. Very good question. Yeah, so I think part of that is you're able to really, with an organization like that, um, if you can show those people, that is what really helps connect, right? So if you can show the board of directors, if you can show, and, and obviously it's to what people are comfortable with, right? Some mm -hmm. people are much more comfortable being in a public, being in the public eye than others. But when you can show the volunteers, when you can show, um, you know, the president and the, you know, all of the folks that are working in the organization, 
um, that really helps set the tone for that organization's voice. Mm -hmm. Um, Another way to do that is kind of looking at what else is out there. So if I was going to go in and craft a social media strategy for a nonprofit organization, the first thing I would do is start taking a look at their website, taking a look at their emails and seeing what kind of tone they have already going and then we would capitalize on that because you really want all of that to match you know, when somebody reads your email to when somebody is looking at your social media post you you need the same branding you need the same tone it, it's very very important so that's really a, a great place to start is even taking snippets of those emails and putting them on your social platforms um, and then you can kind of build the brand voice from there um, but yeah you you definitely can still show the people behind the organization even if it's a broader organization. I mean, I have one nonprofit, it's just two ladies and they just started it. So it's very easy to right. show just two ladies. But when you have the bigger ones, we might do a feature every week. Of This is our team. This is who's helping us this week. This is what they're doing. Um, and, you know, that, um, again, it <laughs> depending on who's comfortable and who's not, um, can, it can really help people connect to the audience, to their organization. And it actually can help um, make your content go further because right. like, hey, look, I got featured today. Like, and they're going to share it with their folks. So yeah, yeah. Um, you tag, yeah. you share, it expands kind of that, you know, the the circle the, uh, of touches and how many people see it. I know those algorithms change constantly. Um, unfortunately, our time is is coming short, but I am I still have tons of questions. I'm sure many of our viewers and listeners do as well. Um, so tell us a little bit, Nicole, about what's in store for you and your team this year. How we might be able to lean into you, your services, kind of you know that educational depth and breadth that you offer. Is there anything that we can you know we should know about that's coming up from you and your team? So um, a great place to stay in touch is on LinkedIn. Um, We have some great stuff coming up. We're looking at some quarterly webinars, which are very similar. They're conversational style, just like this. Um, So we don't do a lot of like static slides. We'll do a lot of interview style conversation um, about branding and social media. So if you connect with me on LinkedIn, that is a great place to find out about the upcoming events. Um, And one thing I do want to mention is that we do have an upcoming brand refresh um, for a new team that I'm on. And I'm so excited about this because I think this is really going to help a lot of organizations. Um, And so what people are going to be getting with this is they're going to get um, a new logo, a new website, and um, a social media plan with content. Um, And so this is a new service that we're offering for everybody, but we're actually going to be giving one away for free in February. Um, so an organization that's really in need of a facelift um, if they, or if they're new and they really haven't started, um, it's going to be a great opportunity for an organization to, to get um, some of the services that they need. Um, and so we're going to be opening the application process for that in uh, February. So I'm really excited about that. So um, if you stay tuned to my social channels, you'll, you'll hear about that when that's available. Yeah, and I know we've connected on LinkedIn, so excited to to have uh, that connection there. For those of you watching and listening, Nicole Porter, CEO, Monomoy Social Media. If you jumped in late and you're not quite sure what the heck Monomoy stands (laughs) for, you need to go back and watch in our archives. It's going to be available in just a few uh, hours later. But MonomoySocialMedia.com, and again, for those of you audible, M-O-N-O-M-O-Y is Monomoy. Uh, you've been fantastic, yeah. Nicole, and just so grateful for your time, your expertise, all of the nuggets of wisdom that you've shared with us. So thank you for being a fantastic guest. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is so much fun. And I really hope that uh, folks got a lot of value out of it. Yeah, absolutely. I know I did. Again, if we haven't met, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I've been joined today by the nonprofit nerd herself, Jarrett Ransom. Again, we want to thank all of our presenting sponsors who join us day in and day out for more than 700 episodes now. Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Be Generous Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and the Nonprofit Nerd. Again, they help us to get these amazing talents from across the globe on, um, including one intrepid social manager from far in the east with her ducks. Right here. She's from right here. 
from right here, the elbow part. The uh, elbow of Massachusetts. Elbow of Massachusetts will forever stay in my brain. I love that. Nicole Porter, you have been a delight to work with today. We hope to get you back on. And as we like to end every episode of the nonprofit show, we want to remind everyone to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow.